Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And as it was in the beginning, and now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen you may be seated thank you this was just an example of how we usually begin our mornings in third grade um, yes okay <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, this is just an example of how, is that better? Of how we begin our morning in third grade. We have books that we use that have a little order of worship in them. And they also have some hymns and some psalms that we read. Um, this, sometimes we read a section of scripture. Um, we might rehearse our memory work, just kind of whatever we're working on, recite poetry, things like that. Um, just a great way to begin our day. Um, so this workshop is called A Day in the Life of Third Grade, and I added the part with no unnecessary interruptions. You might be wondering, well, how does that ever happen? <laughs> um, it can. Um, I've been teaching third grade for seven years. I've been teaching for 17 years, so I feel like I have a little bit of experience with um, organizing kids into their routines and their procedures so that the day flows smoothly. Um, so a day without any interruptions, how does that happen? Well, I've made it happen because I have just really zeroed in on the things that interrupt my day the most and figured out ways to fix those. So we call that effective routines. So what is a routine? Well I looked it up in the dictionary. A routine is a sequence of actions regularly followed. And then I thought well that sounds kind of boring. I don't want to talk about doing things the same way every day but we're not talking about the way we teach. That's not routine. The routines that I'm talking about are you know, how you get your kids to line up, um, what do you do when somebody needs to go to the restroom, <coughs> things like that. Um, routines also, I believe, are the backbone of daily classroom life. I mean, if you don't have a plan in place to handle all of those little things, I mean, it becomes quite chaotic. Um, routines are also a very efficient way to handle the following situations. Things like this. I just picked a few. When students arrive at school, what do they do? When they walk in the room, they need to know what to do. And we will talk more about each one of these later on. When somebody's pencil breaks, you know, they're taking their spelling test, their lead breaks, what happens? When they're done with their work, where do I put this? Somebody has to go to the bathroom. They get done with their work early. You have that one child that takes five minutes to do something. You thought it was going to take 20. Now what do I do? It's the end of the day. How do you wrap up your day in an organized fashion? The list goes on. I put this picture up here because Knowing what to do in each of those situations, having a plan in place can be the difference between the teacher on the left and the teacher on the right. That says the end of the school year, but I know sometimes that can be the end of the day if you, know, you don't have <coughs> plans in place for all of these things. So I think that a simple, efficient procedure for each of those situations that we talked about and many others can actually change your life. It's changed mine. How does it change your life? Well, it can save you time. It can increase productivity. You get way more done. Students, I think they like, they like knowing what to expect, what to do. They feel secure. 
cuts down on interruptions, who doesn't love that? And then it also, without really even making a big deal about it, it can cut down on so many of those little behavior problems that just come from a child who doesn't know what to do or they're bored or something like that. So it, I mean, there's a lot of good things that happen when you have routines set in place. So how do you go about teaching routines to your students? One of the mistakes I made when I first started teaching was I knew what, I thought I knew what I wanted them to do so I just told them and then I just expected them to do it and know it and that didn't work. You know, after a few days I was very frustrated because nobody remembered anything. Um, so now I figured out that you have to tell them what you want them to do and you have to tell them why. Why are we doing this? Then you have to model it for them show them what this routine looks like and most importantly you need to give them the chance to practice so role-playing walking through you know the routine of what do you do in your pencil breaks we have a big um, plan for that and we practice you know I'll have some kids get up and you know model it for me and show the class and we act it out um, it's, pra it's very critical that you practice I read somewhere that you should never assume that a student knows how you want them to behave. You need to model it for them and I think that's really true. And then, this is also important, you need to repeat this. Don't just do it on the first day of school, but also do it on the second day and the third day. And it might even be the third week of school and you're going, are they ever going to remember <coughs> these things? But then, one day you walk into the classroom and you realize they're doing it. They're actually doing it. And you get to this point in the year and if you've ever felt like, what would my kids do if I wasn't here? Would they start their day? You know, would they just... And sometimes I really think they, they would. I mean, they know what to do without being told. And that is a beautiful moment when that happens. All right, so let's get into like the practical part of this workshop. What are some e effective routines? So I have six on the handout that are my favorite. So here's my first one, how we begin the day. And at the beginning of the school year, I have this on a board, kind of like it is right now. They come in and they see all the things that they need to do. Hang up your coats, put away your lunches, whatever's in your backpack, take it out, turn in your homework, um, sh get your pencil sharpened. Since we use these books for our opening, grab one of these, have it on your desk, and then there's always something on their desk that they can do. Um, kind of like what you guys had, a little word search to work on when they're coming in so they're quiet. If there isn't anything on their desk, they know that they can just read quietly. And I wrote that this is the most important routine ever because I think the way you start your day sets the tone for your day. I just personally don't want kids coming in just wandering around the room, you know. It's, I want them to come in and just be seated and be settled and focused and ready to start the day. Um, and also, our kids can come into the classroom at 7.50 and then the bell rings at 8 o'clock, so they have 10 minutes at the most to get this done and they can do all of this in 10 minutes. It shouldn't take any longer than that. I also think that it's no matter what our schedule is, if something um, like happens where we have to slightly change our schedule, I really try to make sure we start our day this way all the time. Um, I just try to really be intentional in you know, this is the routine, this is how we need to start our day because we talked about earlier how kids feel secure when they know what's coming. I think some kids, you know, they miss, like, we didn't, we didn't do our opening today. It doesn't feel right. You know, we missed something. So I just really try to be intentional in the way I start my school day. Um, second routine, and for me, this is, this one was huge. When I started teaching, I quickly realized that the sound of the pencil sharpener just drove me nuts. <laughs> the electric one or that old-fashioned um, wall pencil sharpener. 
and the kids are always breaking pencils. And it's like, how do, you, how do you get around this? And one year I thought, okay, well, we'll use mechanical pencils. Well, that was worse. I mean, there's nothing like a third grader with a mechanical pencil. <laughs> I quickly realized that was no good. Um, tried the little pencil sharpeners that they could keep in their desk. You know, when you have a room with carpet on it and the pencil sharpener drops and all the shavings go everywhere, well, that's, I mean, it's, it was just a mess. I was like, what? can I do to fix this? So a friend of mine said, well, why don't you do what I do? You have a little pencil sharpening station. And she had two buckets. One is labeled go, and that's where all the sharpened pencils sit. And then the other one is labeled stop. And if pencils break throughout the day, they go in there. And then you get a really nice electric pencil sharpener which I bought mine off of Amazon. And I don't know how many of you guys have electric sharpeners, but I typically go through about two a year. So far, this one has held together. It shows no signs of dying, so I'm really excited. I think I got my money's worth. But um, the way this works is, at the beginning of the year on our supply list, I ask for Ticonderoga pencils only. And then I ask for a bunch. So they bring them in and then first day of school, everybody has three pencils and they need to sharpen those and a red pencil because we are always using red pencils for checking. So they get their pencil sharpened, they take them back to their seat and throughout the day when um, one pencil breaks, well you've got two more in your desk, you don't need to get up. If you happen to go through all three and then you need another one, you just get up, you take your broken ones, you put them in the stop bucket, you take something out of the go bucket and you go back to your seat and I don't have to stop what I'm doing to address the situation or they don't have to use a pencil sharpener. So it works very well. Then at the end of the day you've got a bucket full of broken pencils. One of our classroom jobs um, involves somebody gets to sharpen all of those at the end of the day. So some people really, really love that job of being the pencil sharpener. So, and then they put them in the go bucket and in the morning. Next morning you've got plenty of pencils ready to go again. So for me, that was a life-changing procedure. I don't have to listen to the pencil sharpener ever. And that pencil sharpener does sharpen colored pencils too. It's got really sharp blades because most of the time pencil sharpeners die when you stick colored stuff in it. But this one, knock on wood, has, is holding up. Does anybody else do that? You do that. It works really well. I love that. I know. Is that an exacto? Um, it might be. Yeah, Amazon really quickly, like, yeah, yeah. And now it has the different sizes, but I don't ever <laughs> use that. But it got really great <laughs> reviews from teachers. So <laughs> I thought, why not? I'll give it a try. It's worth the money. All right, um, another thing. So we're doing our assignments, and you know they get their math worksheet done. What do I do with this? Like, please don't lay it on my desk. I have kids that try to do that. Like, no, never lay something on my desk. So I bought this um, hanging folder thing at a teacher supply store, and I have a folder for every subject. I know you can't read it all, but like science, spelling, Latin, grammar, and so on. So whatever the assignment is that they are working on, when they get done, they know they just get up, walk over to that, take out the science folder, put their paper in it, put the folder back in its holder, and that's all there is to it. So this is really practical for me. I know some teachers use baskets for individual subjects. You know, that's fine too, whatever works. I like this one because I can just pull those folders out and the, you know, the subjects are all organized and I just toss them in my bag. And um, you can quickly look through a folder to see who's missing. We also give, um, I know some of the other teachers at our school do this. We give each child a number, just in alphabetical order, and we tell them, put your name and your number on your papers, and then that's a really quick way. You can just look through and organize them by number, and you know, oh, number five is missing. You know, number five, where's your homework? <laughs> and so that's um, been really practical, too, to do it that way. Another routine, going to the bathroom. I know, like, younger, 
teachers they usually take group breaks and we do that too but you know there's always you don't always all have to go at 10 o'clock or at 2 o'clock so um, so throughout the day if somebody needs to use the restroom they don't need to raise their hand and ask they just simply get up and walk over and you know if it's a girl you pull the girls pass off and you set it on your desk and you quietly leave the room and only one girl at a time though and boys do the same thing so there's no interruption nobody has to say can I go to the restroom you know in the middle of something the kids, they kind of like their freedom at the first of the year to do that. So we always have to also talk about, you know, if you're making three trips to the restroom in the morning, that's probably not necessary. Um, you need to know a good time to get up and leave the room versus a bad time to get up to leave the room. You know, middle of a math lesson, please don't do that unless it's really an emergency. So we have to work out some of those things, but you know, it works for me. Um, it doesn't disrupt class when somebody has to leave so um, the next one I was going to talk about is what do I do now I got my work done now what do I do you know Mrs. Omi um, I made a teacher in my school does this she had a list of things on the on a poster of what she would like her kids to do when you have some free time so you know if you have other work to do do that and um, we have vocabulary in Latin and spelling and math facts. You can always make flashcards or get <laughs> some flashcards that are already made to study some of those subjects. Um, we take history and Bible tests on Fridays. You can pull out your workbooks and study those things. I also have a really good selection of just like math coloring sheets or word searches, science word puzzles stuff like that they can do or if you don't want to do any of those things you can always just read a book so it's pretty quiet once in a while we might do like group things you know two people can like play a math game or something but I try to watch that you know I don't want the room to get really noisy if other people are trying to work so um, sometimes we organize our desk or if it's been a really long day you, know, you can just color draw Free, have some free time at the end but for the most part when somebody gets done working early it's just a very quiet time you know no um, visiting and stuff like that then this one it's not on the handout but I just put it in there last minute one of the ways I keep my kids organized is we have an assignment book which I'll talk about here on in another slide or two but we ask them at the beginning of the year to get pocket folders one for every subject that we teach in third grade and then we tell them to get certain colors for example the composition folder is yellow so everybody's yellow folder says composition on it and we've got one for grammar and science and Latin and then the homework folder and I use those as well the homework folder is pretty much speaks for itself but the other ones you know if you're writing a story and you don't get it done put it in your composition folder save it for the next time that we have composition and I'm pretty specific about no put it in your yellow folder so you have it for the next time you know don't just slide it in your desk it really cuts down on all the loose papers flying all over the inside of a desk so that works really well for me um, and then over on the right this is where I return work to them if it's going to go home they all have a folder stuffed full of papers and at the end of the day at the end of the week they would clean that out and take it home then another slide I added is jobs I like to give the kids jobs to do one of them is of course the pencil pal they get to sharpen the pencils at the end of every day um, the other jobs pretty self-explanatory electrician does the lights um, substitute if somebody else is sick then they get to fill in for that and I rotate those every week I like to give kids jobs to do because they love to help they can help um, I can't do everything 
Um, and it's always fun to see those firstborn children keep everybody else in line. It's like, you're the door holder. You need to be up there doing your job. <laughs> and then, how to end the day. I think ending the day is almost as important as how you begin the day. Um, I put up there, you do it like in the morning, but just in reverse. This up there is, it's a big enlarged copy of our agenda books that one of the teachers made and you can write on there with dry erase marker. So I write um, like the week and then the things that are in red are like our tests and any homework that's due and then the things in black are the things that we did that day and at the end of the day they take their agenda book which matches that and then they write down all of the important stuff and we do that weekly and then they take it home and on Friday and a parent signs it to say that they looked at it and it's a way to keep a um, record of you know what's coming up what homework is due what homework hasn't been turned in <coughs> things like that um, and then after we fill out the agendas and we load up our backpacks and we put our chairs up on our desk and then we stand and we say a prayer and then we dismiss. And then finally, and I'm going through this way too quickly, <laughs> um, the thing about teaching routines and procedures to children is it does take a lot of work. It really does. And it's easy to get frustrated, like I said before, that they're never going to get it, but they always do. And it is so worth the effort. And I know that everything I've said works beautifully for me, might not work quite the same for you, depending on your situation, but you know, you can take something and tweak it to make it work for you. And then the most important thing is to remind them and to reteach them when necessary. We had a situation the other day where I had to just stop and say, you know what, our pencil sharpening routine is not working out the way it's supposed to be. So we're going to stop and we're going to relearn how to do this. And you know, now it's fine. So, <coughs> and then um, I thought this verse, it kind of made me laugh when I came across it. It says, the pain that you've been feeling can't compare to the joy that's coming. And it's kind of how I look at teaching these things to children. I mean, it, it is a lot of work and sometimes you despair. Are they ever going to remember these things? But then they do and it just really changes the way your day flows and your weeks and you know, the kids are happy and adjusted and they tell other people, hey, you're not, you know, that's not how we're supposed to do that and things like that. So, so that is everything on my handout. And we've got lots of time. <laughs> so is there anything that you would like to ask about or share, or maybe something that you do that I didn't mention or that we could all learn from? And how you work down in the classroom, how you get kids to know when to go to the You know, use that not in the middle of my lesson, a lot of them still ask in the middle of the lesson. Sometimes I well, if I have allowed them to raise their hand to ask to go to the bathroom, or I have a sign, this, the sign language for bathroom is this, so I, mm -hmm. they don't have to ask, they can do this for me. Um, but sometimes if it's the middle of the lesson, I'll ask them, can you wait five minutes, or can you wait about ten minutes, we're about ready to go to the worksheet, and that would be a good transition time to do that. I just wonder if you had other thoughts on how you teach them to know when is a good time to take that break. Well, we talk about, um, you know, if it's an emergency, you know, and I, I tell them I cannot judge right. if you are really having an emergency or not. Um, but you know they just need to understand if you feel like you are having an emergency and you need to get up and walk out in the middle of a math lesson you need to understand that I'm not going to go back and repeat all of this for you so you have to take that chance and I've actually stopped kids you know I'll be teaching and somebody will get up and they'll just quietly head over to the boys or girls pass and I'll say now it's not a good time and they'll just like turn around and go back and sit down, you know, or if they look really distraught, I'll say, you know, five minutes and five minutes, you know, I'll be done and then you can go. So sometimes it's just, it's just reminding them and they'll, they'll get it. They'll get the hang of it. Yes, ma'am. Do you change your, what do I do when I'm done on a regular basis? 
basis or is it the same list? All the time? It's, I've had that up a while. I did not put that list up at the beginning of the year because I um, wasn't really having that issue yet then, but now it's been up for a while. And I find that a lot of kids just like to read. I've got some kids in my class that are just all about reading, you know, our history books and stuff like that. So for me, that's not really an issue because so many of them just love to pull out their books and read. So, but yeah, you can, the activities that I have them do, like the, um, you know, little word games and stuff, I change those out every couple of weeks. So what grades are represented in here? Third, third, second, first. And I think a lot of these would work for, you know, any of those. Yes. Not really. I mean, I didn't put a picture of it, but I do have our schedule posted on the wall. Like, and I change it each day just because, you know, with specials, like some of the times change. But they can see, you know, um, at 8.30, we have grammar, you know, at 9.15, we're going to do this. And so at this point in the year, they're all looking at that and they're watching the clock. And, you know, I might, it, it might just be a matter of saying, you know, in five minutes, it's going to be time for grammar. So make you know, make sure you're ready for that. And um, so no, I don't really have a set thing I do other than just posting my schedule. And I have some clock watchers that are very like, Mrs. Omi, it's grammar time now, you know, so. Um, but I guess there are moments where, like if there's jingles or something that we can sing, I might put those on, you know, as a way of like, okay, you know, we're putting our math away, we're getting ready for this next thing, you know, and when the song's over, we all need to be ready to go. They work faster with music is playing, I've noticed. <laughs> So does anybody have anything that they do in their classroom that maybe we could benefit from? Anything that we didn't talk about that you do that that idea. That's a good one. I really, I mean, have kindergarten, for our kids that's, that's kind of our wiggle break. Like, yeah. say, okay, we're going to go get this from our backpack, you may hop. Yeah. And hop back. Again. <coughs> yeah. So kind of get those <coughs> movements out of them so they're ready for the next chunk of learning. Yeah. No, that's important, too. If our day is such where we've done a lot of sitting, we'll do things like that, too. I've got an animal yoga Thing where it's like okay you know walk over to your backpack you know like a bear and so things like that so. you said you teach kindergarten yes. so where are you guys <coughs> from I know some of you are from which I guess I didn't introduce myself I'm from Wichita, Kansas. I teach at the classical school. Um, I've got some of my 
fellow teachers here also. What about the rest of you? Where are you from? St. Louis. St. Louis. Branson. Branson. Here. And where is? Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. Texas. Okay. From Topeka. Okay. Thank you. I mean, I can see a lot of her routines and it's just because they're very, yeah, they're just very, and I think she does a very good job of like, she gets through her stuff so much faster because she does those routines that take forever. Well, also you guys, you know, I mean, not quite like nine-year-olds, so you didn't have your hand up every two seconds. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. It's not quite the same subject. Okay, that's fine. I wonder about a lot. I mean, as much as, you know, and I often wonder what students do in their own classroom. Um, do they always raise their hands to talk and answer questions? Do they ever call out answers? How do you let them know what your expectation is? Because in music, sometimes I'm okay with them just all saying what they think the answer is. But then other times, you know, I spend a lot of time with them. Yeah, I think it kind of seems to depend on maybe what's happening in their moment. It just depends on what we're doing, you know, and I think at this point they've they've kind of figured it out like if it's math or sometimes just with body language, you know, if I'll ask a question and I'll just, you know, go like that like and then they'll call out answers, which is fine, but then I might say, "Okay, we need to raise our hand for this one." You know, so sometimes it's just like the cues that I use, <laughs> but it's not every time. They don't need to raise their hand every time. Sometimes I like having discussions where people are calling out and responding to what somebody else is saying. Well, unless um, there's anything else that we want to talk about, I'm going to wrap this up, and I know it's really early, and I apologize. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you gain something from it, um, something that you can go back and use. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to, to ask. Um, what I am going to have you do, because as we were talking about how to end the day, I'm going to end our time together the way I would end it with my students. So if we could all stand up one more time. I found this, this is a, a benediction that is based off of Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. I learned this at a youth conference that I went to, and they've just sort of um, made it a little simpler. But it is, I have this on a poster, and we say this at the end of every day, and by now they've all got it memorized. But um, it's one of my favorite Bible verses anyway. And um, the way it's written is just so simple, and it just kind of puts everything that happens during the day into perspective and so um, it's a very calming way to end our day so if you need to move closer to see it we'll say this together rejoice in the Lord for he is near do not be anxious about anything but pray about everything and the peace of God will guard your hearts in Jesus Christ amen
so thank you. And that's the last thing we would do after that. It's time to open the door and let everybody go home. But, <laughs> but like I said, I just like how calming it is and just to... Thank you. <laughs>